okay, well, you graduate 87, 88, but you started doing stand-up in 89. Mm -hmm. So what led to you actually going to an open mic? Well, I'm, the first person I ever saw in my life that I wanted to be was Sammy Davis Jr. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know, he was, you know, when I saw on TV back when they just had three channels, he was the only black person I knew that did everything, and he was on every person's show that was white or had a TV show. And he would, you know, he'd kick it with the best of them. He knew comedy, he was doing directly, he was acting, he was, you know, I see him like, wow, I want to be that, that that little bad black man is is amazing, and I want to get inside that television. But as I grew older, I know I didn't have that much talent as Sammy, so I just focused on what worked for me, which was comedy. So using what I had, you know, for the years, I just took that on stage and been a military brat. That's very funny. Hmm. Uh, okay, so your first stand-up, I mean, the first time you took the, you know, you know, took the stage in an open mic. Did you do well or did you bomb? First time I took the stage, I bombed. Okay. But it wasn't really a bomb. You just weren't that funny. It was, yeah, it was a sit down comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was funny in college because my gift is just mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Naturally, just talking stuff. When I just come off the top of my head and I talk about stuff that I did in college, but when I had to put it into an actual act when I got out of college and, you know, like it's beginning, middle, end, people got to laugh. You have to affect more than just the people in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it was about a cat that I had and I put in a microwave. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> I sat down and told the story and it was like, okay. <laughs> people were shocked. <laughs> like, <gasps> what was that? <laughs> So the next comedian, I'll never forget, he was good too. His name was Percy, I think Percy Taylor. He was, he was popping back then. And, um, and I saw him, he got up and he did a whole bit on how it was not funny. <laughs> 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 how, I don't know, at first it's called stand-up comedy, not sit-down comedy, because I sat down and told it like I was giving a monologue or something. And uh, you know, I was like, wow. Because I, I, I did totally opposite of what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I never forgot that. So I use that as motivation to, uh, you know, to get back and get my chops right. And that guy has opened for me like lots of times. <laughs> okay. So at what point did you decide to move to L.A.? I always wanted to move to L.A., but that was uh, in 89. I had to go back and save my money up. Okay. So, so it was the same year you started doing stand-up? Um, well, I started in college, but, I, you know, I oh, okay. say you, I don't, what you're saying. Yeah. you don't really start stand-up until you start making money. Mm-hmm. And so I moved to L.A. in 89, got there in March of 89, uh, met the late, great Robert Harris, became good friends with him. He took me around a couple of places. You had the Birdland, you know, um, in West that was in um, Long Beach, T.K. Kirkland. He was running that. Um, and subbing for him was D.L. D.L. was kind of subbing in for him. So but T.K. and who had the biggest names, the first person I saw was T.K. Right. And I was like, wow. This is L.A. comedy? He was out of control. Yeah, he's serious. Serious. He's a regular on my show. Yeah. Good friends with TK. Yeah. But then I seen Robin Harris. And I was like, oh, wow. Now this is comedy. And I felt like Fred Flintstone because I came with my little, you know, St. Louis attitude. And I was trying to heckle Robin Harris and he made me feel like Fred Flintstone when he got that small. He took the whole audience and turned it on me and talked about me. And that was another thing that I used when I got to LA is like, I gotta be that guy. Do you remember how he clowned you? Oh yeah. What was he saying? Cause he was, he was talking about some, something. And I said, oh, shut up, you don't know. And he just snapped his fingers. Everybody got quiet. Everybody said, ooh, you don't know. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, what? And my friend who I was sitting with, who invited me there, who was from St. Louis, I looked up to him because I dated his, well, I didn't date him, I went to school with his sister. We were a little boyfriend, girlfriend back in grade school, but he was a big time guy out here. And he was like, man, don't, don't say nothing to him. You're gonna get us all killed. And Robin <laughs> just focused on me and that spotlight got right on me. And man, I started shrinking. And before you knew it, my feet were swinging and I just wanted to run out the club. And uh, you know, I never got that, but we became best friends. Well, I've actually heard the story from other people as well. Like, for example, um, Faze on Love. He yeah, said this one time he was at a comedy show with, with Robin Harris. He was wearing some red boots. Ooh. And Robin went in on him so bad that he went in the back and threw those red boots in the garbage. <laughs> threw them away. <laughs> threw them away. And I had some red shoes on, some red boots. Um, and he talked about my boots so damn bad when I got on stage. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> All right, I went downstairs and took the boots off and threw them in the trash. <laughs> I was like, man, don't ever let me buy no goddamn red boots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was my first, uh, and then going up to the comedy at in um, L.A. Who else? John Sally. So he made the mistake of walking into a Robin Harris show with a pink suit. <laughs> he said, look at this big Pepto-Bismol looking motherfucker. <laughs> Pepto-Bismol. He said, went home and threw the suit away. Robin Harris would make you throw your clothes away. Clothes away. Or you, or you, you, you could, back in the day, if they had social media, he made Tommy Hearns mad. Oh, like one boxer. Time. Oh, my God. Tommy Hearns used to come, and he used to talk about how sugar whooped on him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right there. Magic, in front of him. Magic used to come in there. He used to talk about how Magic couldn't talk back in the day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. He had a lisp. <laughs> he, had yeah. a lisp. he was like, man, Matt, you, you better not be come, come up here talking like that. <laughs> he was like, hey, I'm glad your passes was smoother than your voice. Uh, he used to <laughs> say stuff like that. <laughs> what, didn't Tiny Lister want to fight him? Like, cock eyed Tiny all the time. All the time. Cock eyed is, is. And Robin would be like, all I got to do is go here. You don't know who you're grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> he used to uh, Tiny Tiny took it too far What would Tiny do in there? He would count? almost try to Get up there and fight Kick over tables And do his I'm from you know Cause he was from Compton He was a Debo thing Debo No he wasn't Debo He, he wasn't was Debo just, Yeah but he, he was, was just, So the Debo attitude Is what, what I'm saying What was the um, his, his wrestler name Zeus Zeus He was Zeus Nah yeah. I'm from Compton You don't talk about me Compton Everybody's like Who are you looking at? <laughs> 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 the stage is that way <laughs> So he tried to like, the time he make it to the stage, Robert would run through the audience sometimes, like, hey, man, because he would try to choke him out or something. But, mm. yeah, it was, yeah, those are good times. God rest, Tiny yeah. Mr. 